Hello race fans and welcome to round two of the V8 Supercar Online Premier Series from the picturesque and super fast Watkins Glen International Raceway. This V8's online broadcast is made possible with Get Dirty MX and Track Racer. I'm Leo Gray with Clayton Brooks in the commentary box, Reese Gardner in the pits, and it is going to be a fantastic race that we've got here for you now. Clayton, what do you reckon of the race that we're going to see today here? Brooksy, it's going to be intense in my mind. Oh, excitement comes to mind. This is going to be pure excitement for the whole 52 laps, I think. Um, just the qualifying time, so close, so hard to break the draft around here. Uh, we've got varying weather throughout the race. It's, everything's thrown at these guys, and I think we're in for one special night of racing. Absolutely. This online premiere series is a new experience for a lot of these drivers compared to what they're used to. And we've seen that already because this race that they've entered into, compared to the qualifying session that just finished, weather conditions are supremely different. It's much cloudier, there's a lot more humidity, it's a lot hotter too, and the times are very, very fast. We're seeing warm-up times already three or four tenths quicker than what we saw in qualifying, and that'll probably be with a full tank of fuel. Yeah, we've got overcast conditions, uh, a little bit warmer, but the track temp may be a little bit cooler. That's what's providing the quicker time. So drivers have got this quick couple of minutes to get used to the uh, weather conditions, the wind, and they're going to be into it. Yeah, it's also going to be a pit stop race. Drivers are going to have to make at least two stops for fuel in this race. 52 laps around Watkins Glen is a pretty long way. And we've got Reese Gardner in the pits to keep us updated. And Reese, any bit of info or goss for us before we get things underway? I have no new stuff, guys, but uh, we, uh, we, we will see uh, at least two stops uh, for everyone. As you did say, Leo, the question is when these stops are going to be made. And uh, the teams have been very secretive on uh, this information, but I can uh, tell you that the Sim Instrument guys, as I said in warm up, are going to be doing a long first stint. Everything else is completely up in the air. I'm just as in the dark as you are, and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be uh -huh. very exciting. We I've heard a little, little, a little birdies, uh, Madison Down has predicted Richard Ham said to run away with a win here tonight. <laughs> yes, certainly, uh, and, and I do trust the word of Madison down. I am Sim Racing Moses, and this is the word of Madison brought down from the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out because the cars are gritting up. We'll have to quickly run through the qualifying order. Richard Hampstead claimed pole for our second event here in this championship. Matty Hill, John Latham, so three TTL cars at the front, followed by Down, Ellis, McKnight, Chastain, McLeod, and Phil Sell, Kelly, Ortridge, O'Brien, Carroll, Butler, Stenberg, Baines, Burton, Fulcher, Jovanovic, Ian Ford, Josh Burden, Philip Johansson, Bocatel, Tim Jackson, Aaron Hamilton, Corey Preston, Cerny, Sharp, Dixon. It's just a long list of cars. Stephen Clark, Henry King, Joshua Beecroft, Chris Dickinson, Scott Tate, Lance Perkins, and Chris Hogan is going to round out the 36 cars that are gridding up here at Watkins Glen. You can see him all the way down the front straight. We're getting ready to go racing. We've already had Hampstead predicted as a winner by Madison Down, but we'll see what happens in 52 laps time as the revs ring, rise, ring, ring. and we are racing at Watkins Glen. There's the front group's got away. There's a few stalled on the back of the grid, but the couple front cars have all got away finally. Head through the first turn. The three wide back there around him spot. It's going to be Hampstead and Latham. In the first two, side by side for second with Madison down, trying to make it around Matty Hill through the S's. We said it's very difficult to do that, and Hill he gets the position. Now we're heading to the bus stop, which we saw a lot of action there in the development series race. Make sure you go back and watch that one if you haven't already. Looks like we're pretty clean on lap one. Everyone settled down as they get through that super tight section of track. 36 cars around this place it's a lot and there's not a lot of room out there yeah the front two cars Richard Ham said John Latham's really stuck to the rear of him as Matt Hilly gets a little bit loose in the penultimate corner seeing a lot of jostling for position in these early stages and it's going to be Hampstead lead the first lap from John Latham Matthew Hill, Madison Down, Lee Ellis, Jared Philsell, Chad Tastain, Jason Knight, Mitchell Cloud, and Dean O'Brien, the drivers rounding out the top 10, and it is an absolute train of cars. 
everyone has got barely just a couple of tenths between the car in front of them and I think it's going to continue like this for pretty well most of the race. And of course viewers, we're in for two pit stops tonight, we've got reduced fuel tanks for this race, forcing every driver to do two pit stops, so uh, strategy is going to be a huge part. Absolutely, we've already seen that come into play tonight, as drivers took different strategies, clean air is going to be pretty important, the draft is king here, but if you're getting held up by a quicker driver, you might be able to make a pit stop and jump him in the pit cycle, they're going to be something we'll have to watch. Jake Burton and just gets a move on the inside of Tony Autridge through the carousel. Autridge has dropped back because he started in position 11. He's now running in 15th by my count. Yeah, he's got a little bit of damage to the front right of that car. Yeah, he's, he's uh, coming into the pits is Tony Autridge. So Autridge pits at the end of the second lap. It's going to be 52 laps. That's a long way around this place. At the moment, we've got John Latham and Richard Hanstead sitting out in front. They've got a bit of a margin over teammate Matthew Hill behind them. We've got Lee Ellis making a move on team boss Madison down for fifth, Ellis fourth position. He's got the position, but look at Phil Cell who's trying to get in on it. Everyone jostling hard, and we'll touch base with Reese in the pits. Got a bit of info from Pit Lane for us. Have you, Reese? Yeah, I have. Um, I've been talking to TTR Spy Guy, my uh, my window into the TTR and uh, Sim Instruments garages, and uh, he is hearing reports that uh, the weather conditions, uh, the new overcast conditions for this race, are catching a lot of people out because uh, since there's no sun in the sky, there's no trackside shadows for people to find their markers. So it's going to be very interesting seeing people uh, having to completely change the way they drive the track uh, as the weather conditions have changed. I love this. Well, that's one of the first things that uh, that will catch you out. Never use a movable object as a brake marker. And uh, the drivers are learning that in probably the hardest way they possibly can. Talking about immovable objects uh, um, uh, in that sort of respect, I'm also hearing that Madison Down has hit uh, the wall. Uh, the top of the S's just uh, given a, a bit of a love tap and uh, uh, TTR Spy Guy has said go figure seeing as uh, Madison Down has uh, had many an appointment with that wall. Yes, he's very well acquainted with that wall over the years, Madison Down. I'd say that's when uh, his teammate Lee Ellis was able to get by. I tell you, it doesn't look like he's hurt him much because he's, uh, if anything, he's pulled a bit of a gap back in on Lee Ellis and Phil Cell is just bit behind them who's got a lot of pressure from Chad Chastain. Chastain is trying to keep him company there in one of those SDC racing Fords. He's got a teammate behind him as well in James McKnight. Great showing by McKnight in qualifying. Still a big pack of single file cars. You can probably say from third back down on through to uh, where we say about 15th place, everyone is pretty well within sight, within range of everybody else. That's an interesting point that you make there, Leo, because uh, since those two TTL cars are uh, all the way out in front, they can pretty much control the strategy of the race as uh, they don't necessarily uh, have to worry about um, traffic and all that sort of stuff when it comes to actually taking their pit stops. I'm um, This is a bit of a stab in the dark from me here, but uh, I think they're going to take a bit of a longer first stint, uh, sort of uh, make out a bit of a gap uh, on the rest of the cars, and then... Uh, Hit, uh, I don't know, somewhere between lap, oh, I don't know, 15, 20, something like that. Just a stab in the dark. We'll see what happens. Guys, I've got Jared Filser. was in sixth position. He's been nudged by Chad Chastain through the bus stop and turned around, and he's probably suffered some heavy damage from that. Right, yeah, Filser dropped all the way back to position 22 in that tag Pex Management Falcon. Big loss of position there for Filser. His car's a bit beaten and banged on the left-hand side. Chastain is, uh, where's he found it? I think Chastain must have dropped some ground after that one because he's in 11th position now. He's got big damage on the right front, so uh, you put two and two together and you can definitely see the witness marks. Interesting to see if the stewards take any course of action. Of course, we've got uh, 
Got Big Brother watching on, making sure drivers are well behaved. No one's doing anything that they shouldn't. We'll leave it for their call. Just and I've also, it. Madison Downs got back in front of teammate Lee Ellis. So, uh, Madison Down back up into fourth position. Clearly, that, uh, that rub with his wall hasn't hurt him too much, but uh, that previous lap, he was half a second quicker than Lee Ellis. Madison Down was reporting in that qualifying session that um, maybe he wasn't comfortable with the car, with the track, not sure what it was, but uh, he wasn't happy with his driving overall. But he runs very wide at that last turn, and that allows Lee Ellis to get a bit of a, uh, get a, bit of a run on him there. Ellis not going to be able to make the move into turn one. Just having a look, Leo. Everyone's doing low tens in that top group. The two guys out in front, they've been pumping out some 109s, especially Hampstead. Every lap so far in the 109s, clearly got the pace tonight. That is tremendous pace. He's pulled a second on his teammate John Latham. Clearly, these TTL cars have got a lot of speed dialed into them. Addy Hill is a further two seconds back behind Latham. But uh, he's not really pulling away from Madison down in a big way. Yeah, he's about a tenth oh, quicker. Guys. Tony Mitch Autry's in the been turned around by Dean O'Brien. Just about. Uh, gave him a bit of a tap into the chicane, and it looks like he's got a slowdown penalty. That's very unfortunate for Mitch McLeod. A lot of action out there, and uh, it can be very hard to make a pass around this place, and McLeod has dropped back to 11th from that contact there. Did you see who it was, Reese? Um, it was Dean O'Brien that uh, um, tried to pull a move on the inside into the chicane and uh, made contact with his right rear quarter. Right, well, O'Brien we should probably keep an eye on because he's moved his way up into position 6. He started back in 12th in that Osram car. I think he's under pressure from Sean Kelly. Dean holds the high ground through turn 1, but great bit of driving there through O'Brien if he gets himself up that far. Hopefully... Um, Hopefully that was just a bit of a racing incident contact rather than a uh, rather than a harmful punt out of the way. But uh, again, this while we've got stewards just behind that though. We've got Sean Kelly running it all the way to the inside wall to protect from those SDC cars. And yeah, talking, Sean Kelly, talking I is, <coughs> Sorry, on, Reese, I was uh, going to butt in there. Talking to the stewards, Chad Chastain's received a black flag penalty for his contact with Jared Filso at the bus stop. There we go, we see that penalty being issued. Chastain is down in 10th position at the moment. And he will be heading into pit road shortly. Got a damaged car out there, that's one of the GT Art Falcons. It looks like, is that uh, Jason, no, no, Chris Dickinson, I think it is. He's made hey. uh, contact with something in a big way and his car is well off the pace and limping back to, uh, limping back to the pits. And uh, just seeing as well over the race control channel, Dean O'Brien has been black flagged. You can only assume that would be for contact that he made at the bus stop with Mitch McLeod. So O'Brien in the Osram Ford is going to drop down the order big time. All of his hard work undone in just one small little incident. That's a stop-go yeah. penalty for those guys. O'Brien's out and away he goes again, but he's lost. He's lost 20 positions. He's down in the 30th on the charts. Now working the ninth lap of this 52 lap race at Watkins Glen International. Gap at the front still maintained about a second between those two teammates, Richard Hampstead and John Latham. They're still quickest cars on the track. Hampstead looks like he's been, uh, Hampstead and Latham, the only two drivers that have been into the nines. And they're still running very, very low tens. Both cross the line at a 10 minute, 10 second point two lap. A little bit further back, Lee Ellis is applying plenty of pressure to Madison Down. They're battling over fourth and fifth positions. Yeah, interesting that those two team cars have swapped spots a couple of times. They haven't been able to keep pace with the uh, the Matthew Hill Ford that's running in third position at the moment. Like they're probably about uh, a tenth of a second off is what the uh, the averages appear to be. But Hilly, at the same token, doesn't have the pace of his top two teammates right now. Three tenths of a second slower that last time by.
This grip between Sean Kelly and the two SDC cars of Martin Carroll and James McKnight, it's really heating up. They're uh, looking for a way past those two SDC cars. I'm liking the way those two are, uh, are working together. They both seem to be um, prepared to let the lead car do the work. McKnight's given Carroll the room, and Carroll was looking very, very racy on the back of Sean Kelly just a couple laps ago. We sure saw Kelly go defensive all the way to the inside wall down the back straight. And uh, Marty Carroll chased him as best he could, but had to... Uh, had to yield there and maintain his position. These guys are fighting for position 6th, 7th and 8th in the race at the moment. And about 10 seconds off the race lead. The field has spread out a bit more than I thought it would at this early stage of the race. But nevertheless, there's still little battles going on anywhere. Uh, Kurt Stenberg has got plenty of pressure from Michael Fulcher. Been that way since the green flag. Yeah, Jake Burt and Kurt Stenberg seem to have been running together for most of the race. They're sitting in position 10 and 11. Other two teammates in the Sim Instruments Fords. Michael Fulcher in uh, P12 though, he's come from 17th in the grid on that Kamikaze Ford. That's a, uh, a good head, good bit of progress up through the field. Oh, this is Lee Ellis. Lee Ellis went very deep into turn one, very loose off there and He's got in front of Madison down. Must have been something of a move to be able to pull that off. It looks like uh, damage to both cars. A... It looks like damage. already in front. And uh, Reese, have you got something for us regards to Ellison down at the moment? Yeah, I have indeed. Uh, looks like Madison down according to the sources that I have, hit the wall at the S's once again and uh, he's uh, nursing a little bit of car damage so uh, seems that Ellis was able to get through and they are going to uh, try and stay in a bit of a draft group to possibly uh, catch up to the top three. A draft group might be the hearing... way to go for, uh... yeah carry on Reese. I'm also hearing that Bo Cattell uh, blew his engine into the second last corner so unfortunately uh, heartbreak for Cattell, he is, uh, you're right, out of the race, 33rd position, and in the pits. That's a terrible run of luck for Cattell, who's having a hard time coming to grips in this series, because that's two weeks in a row we hear that he's blowing a motor. Now, I was going to mention about uh, draft trains, I'm looking back at those SDC cars, Martin Carroll and James McKnight, they seem to be uh, well prepared to work together, and they are working Sean Kelly hard. Just watched Certainly them all are. over the back and through the carousel last time by, but just can't find a way through. Kelly is doing a fantastic job to hold on, but those two STC Falcons are just monstering him. And the draft working to good effect, because out of those four cars, Mitch McLeod, the one behind him, is catching up quite fast. He's uh, putting in some good lap times. Yeah, McLeod actually running faster than second place John Latham at the moment, and only a tenth off race leader, Richard Hampstead. This is quickly going to become a four-car fight. Kelly must have some serious pace on him, though, because he seems to just be able to pull away just a little bit of a gap each time. But uh, eventually, Marty Carroll ranges back up on him, and uh, the fight continues again. We're not sure exactly what damage Madison Down has to his ultimate carding Falcon, but he's still about holding that second margin from his teammate. Still just trying to sit in that draft. Seems that Ellis has pulled away a tiny bit, actually, from what I can see uh, from the blimp view. The last laps were uh, were virtually identical, but uh, of course we'll see what happens. Now, um, just looking back through, I was watching the timesheets and saw some movement on there. Ian Ford, he's coming in and made a pit stop. 
trying to work out whoever I can't tell if that was for uh, a service or uh, or for some other sort of problem. Whether it was a problem or whether it was a scheduled stop, but uh, very interesting to see because of course we are going to have two rounds of pit stops in this uh, in this event. Can't wait to see how the drivers all work it out. Last time by in the development series race, that was a 25 lapper around Watkins Glen. <clears throat> And uh, we saw that it paid off to pit early. Get yourself some clean traffic. Sean Kelly, I'm seeing, is in the pits. So, Kelly pits. And that's a 17-second stop, so uh, they're definitely taking tyres. Of course, we saw everybody in the uh, in the development series race. Like a lot of people were just taking fuel, but Kelly pits from well inside the top 10. He's going to rejoin in the 28th position. And he's going to be the first of the front runners to uh, to pull the strategy call. Yeah, of course he was getting plenty of pressure from those SDC cars behind him, so he's got out of all that, and now he wants to run some clean laps, try and get a bit of a gap on those guys. Absolutely. And uh, as I was mentioning in the development series race, we saw that that did pay uh, pay dividends for guys like um, like Simon Madden and Sam Compton. Pitting early gets you out of battles, gets you out of traffic, and uh, if you can leapfrog someone in the pits, that's the way to do it with an early stop. Especially if these guys are taking tyres. Or well, just looking back at those SDC cars, McLeod's got to run around the outside. I think that Martin Carroll brushed the wall up through the S's and he just steps aside and lets, uh, lets Mitch McLeod through. That separates those two teammates. Cloud in position 7 at the moment, of course, ran into a bit of drama early on in the race, so he'll be on a mad scramble to get in any position that he can get back to where he was in the race. Matthew Hill, from position 3, he's dived into pit lane. Now this will be a um, this will be a good indicator of what a pit stop is going to mean to uh, the drivers out there. Kelly running in P3, but looked like he didn't quite have the pace of his top running teammates, Richard Hampstead and John Latham. Those guys remain on track. Hampstead started on the pole position and has led all 16 laps so far. We'll have to watch Matty Hill see where he comes out, see where he ends up in relation to Richard Hampstead. The lap times are going to be a uh, Big, big telling point here. As Carroll also has entered a pit lane. It's a long pit stop from Matthew Hill. I think there must be something wrong with his pit stop. Yeah, because he's lost a ground. Uh, he lost ground to Martin Carroll in that stop there already. Richard Hampstead Thanks. is coming into the pits, guys. Right, race leader. It looks like John Latham is following him in. Okay, the two front-running cars, TTL cars, running the same strategy. Hampstead and Latham both on at the end of lap 16. Going to move Madison Between 15 down. 15 and 20, I said. I think I was uh, <laughs> fairly spot on with that prediction. <laughs> lap 17 is indeed between 15 and 20, so we'll give you that one, Reese. And that's moves Madison window, down to the but... point. <laughs> Followed by James McKnight, Mitch McLeod. And uh, Matty Hill is still in the pits. He's clearly got some sort of a drama. And that's dropped him well out of contention. But we're going to watch Hampstead and Latham with interest. See where they come out in comparison with uh, Sean Kelly, for example. I think Hampstead will maintain the race lead. Kelly... Yeah, an internet dramas because he's uh... John Kelly's in the pits again. Kelly's making a second stop already. I must have missed something there. No, oh, yeah, the no. Net. Oh, Corey Preston's had a massive moment up through the S's, and he's on his side. He's trying to pull it up. He was currently he was in 19th position, but he's going to have huge damage, and I'd say that's race over for Corey Preston. Well, this place can bite you in a big way. Those S's 
That is uh, that is not a sequence of corners to take lightly. If you go in there, you go in big. And out of all that, uh, Lee Ellis has definitely closed the margin to John Latham. He has. You it can see like the gap. James McKnight. James McKnight is going to be pitting in this lap, as he uh, as he says in uh, the driver chat. We'll be looking out for him coming in this lap. And I'm also hearing from TTR Spy Guy that uh, everyone at uh, Sim Instruments Motorsport and TTR have optional repairs when they come into their pit stops. So they're all running with damage, which is, uh, which is going to make things easier for TTL, I believe. Yeah, that's not the best of team strategies. And uh, Corey Preston still trying to make his way back into the pits. He's off at the, uh, the gravel trap at that penultimate turn, clearly trying to keep himself out of harm's way, so James McKnight into the pits, race leader Madison down, also into the pits nearly everyone has cycled three, you've only got uh, a few guys that are left running, but I think that this lap is probably going to be all of them, got Bobby Ivanovic and Henry King fighting hard and it's going to be Ivanovic into the pits, Henry King stays out this lap as does Michael Fulcher. Michael Fulcher has the lead of the race in the number 27 Kamikaze Falcon. Henry King in P2. And he's Boy. already getting passed by Richard Hampstead. So uh, Hampstead, second on the road and the effective race leader. And the first driver to make a pit stop. Looking down through those pit stop times. Looks like we'll be seeing times anywhere from between, uh, say, 17 and 21, 22 seconds. Take four tyres and a full tank of fuel. Richard Hampstead did it in 21.8. Lee Ellis, we know he made up a bit of ground on John Latham. He did it in a 17.8, so he was just over two seconds quicker than John Latham. That was a very good pit stop from Lee Ellis. By far one of the quickest, except for Chad Chastain. He did a 16.8, but he did that under the black flag, so... I'm not sure if that pit stop's going to quite count for him. Imagine it wouldn't. Although, uh, on my timing, I've got Chastain is making two stops to the pits, so the first one will have been his, uh, will have been his, um, stop-go penalty, and the second would have been a scheduled stop. So, uh, very quick pit work there by, um, by Chastain's guys. So as we cycle through, Richard Hampstead does now take the race lead. Henry King still stays out, but John Latham is going to have third. Lee Ellis will have moved himself up into third place in the race. Of course, with uh, Matthew Hill having dramas, Hilly's dropped out of the race for some reason. So there's just two of those TTL guys left to uh, to run through. Now, Reese, we got any other information about uh, about pit work or anything like that at the moment? I uh, I do have a bit of information to shed light on the Sean Kelly situation, making a um, <clears throat> a second possibly unscheduled pit stop. Um, TTR Spy Guy is not 100% sure, but uh, he did tell me that uh, it is possible that uh, Sean might have gotten a pit speeding penalty. Everything else, uh, I think that's uh, all I've got right now. Uh, okay, well, that, that does you. explain it. Yep. Absolutely. That's a shame because I was interested to see how that uh, that short pit would have played out for Sean Kelly. Whether he could get any sort of jump, but he finds himself stuck all the way down in 25th place at the moment. That is quite a shame for Sean. Now we have 21 laps in the book. And Richard Hampstead still remains our race leader. We'll run through the top 10 as they stand at the moment. We've got Hampstead from Latham, Ellis, Down and McLeod. Jake Burton has worked his way all the way up to 6th place now that these pit stops are cycled through. After starting 16th on the grid, that's a fantastic drive for Jake Burton, but he's under huge pressure from James McKnight. That's definitely going to be a fight to watch. McKnight's got a good run out of the carousel. Burton, Burton tries to run into the inside. Not going to give him any more room than he needs to. They make a bit of contact in the break zone, it seems. 
And Burton's going to hold under position. Yeah, there's a slight rubbing of door handles there in the braking. McKnight definitely looks like he's got some pace on at the moment, though. Ian Ford as well. He's in the eighth spot from 19th on the grid. It's been a good drive from Ian. Yeah, great run in that Demidov Innovations, Ford. And he's also got uh, the other SDC car for company. That's Martin Carroll in ninth. Oh, James McKnight's got a good run on Burton. Got Here the we go. Line. This is the hot spot. And Burton yields the position. So James McKnight moves himself up into position six. Jake Burton still holding down a very respectable seventh. And those SDC cars have had pace, so very interesting to see how they do it. And on that, Martin Carroll takes the position on Ian Ford as well. That moves Martin Carroll up into position 8. As the race stands, Richard Hampstead's got a three second lead over his teammate John Latham, who's got another two and a bit second lead over Lee Ellis, who has quite a margin of eight seconds over his teammate in Madison Down. It's the top four at the moment. Hey, I just quickly wanted to highlight uh, there's battles all throughout the field. Looking down in 23rd place, Philip Johansson battling with another one of the SDC cars. I think that's Nigel Baines and Sean Kelly in there. Kelly trying to uh, make his way back through the field after his pit lane speeding penalty. And Johansson and Baines have been side by side for about half a lap. <laughs> Look how wide Kelly has to run. I think he's going to clear, he's not going to clear Johansson up through the S's just yet, but uh, he's in a big hurry to get around these two boys, but uh, they're not making it easy for him. And these guys are fighting for 23rd, 24th, and 25th. I love the intensity that you find from every single driver involved all the way down through the field. They worked hard to make it into this, into this event, and uh, they are definitely giving it everything that they've got. Yeah, for Sean Kelly to hold on around the outside there, heading into the S's, it takes a lot of courage. Worked out for him, and he's got a, putting a lot of pressure on Nigel, Nigel Baines here in these last two corners. Seems like everywhere we look, there's an SDC car in the uh, in the thick of the action. These guys are definitely getting uh, definitely getting a bit of excitement in, and Kelly takes the position heading through the final turn. So Kelly is going to be on a charge. Oh, got Henry King. He's just brushed the wall coming out of the S's. He's had a massive moment. Managed to hold it, but it looks like the car suffered a bit of damage to that right-hand side. Yeah, right front wheel arch is looking a bit worse for wear. And, uh... Speaking of that, also reading in the, uh... In the in the uh, in the the race channel there, Jake Burton may be in a bit of trouble. I think Jake Burton is uh, is Jake Burton's in the pits. Going to be a meatball flag understand for Jake. He must have brushed the wall somewhere. This is going to be an unscheduled stop for Burton, dropping him out of the top ten. Must have hit the wall somewhere or some sort of damage on the car. And the in-game stewards have deemed it to be a hazard and have called him into the pits to get that repaired. So Burton drops all the way down to 22nd on the timesheets at the moment, and he's going to keep dropping. I've got a good battle shaping up here from 7th uh, for Carroll through Sinberg, Ford, and Phil Sell's catching these guys at a rate of knots. Of course, he could drop back quite a bit in the early stages with an accident. But he's fought his way back through, and he's going to catch these three in front and provide plenty of action. Definitely looks that way as we check the lap times. Jared Philsell in position 10. Of course, he had that fantastic run at Circuit of the Americas two weeks ago where he led the bulk of the race. He's now in P10. 
but his lap times he was uh he was a second quicker than Ian Ford than Ian was on that last lap and as they cross the line this time by another eight tenths he takes out of Ian Ford you're already heading up through the S's he's going to be in a position to make a move in the next lap or two yeah, I'm not sure if Ian Ford's suffering a bit of uh, damage there. He's got quite a bit of damage looks to the front right if it's affecting his performance because his lap times have dropped off in the last five or so laps. Yeah, he's definitely the slowest of the guys around him, the slowest car in the top ten right now. It's an ugly-looking Demidov car on the front right. I don't think that was there the last time that we saw him. We've already seen from a number of guys just how hard this place can bite you if you just make the smallest of mistakes. Ian's car is not looking good as he heads out of the carousel. Phil Cell's going to get him within the next lap or two. Yeah, he's definitely struggling to get that car turned in. Oh, he's oh. tapped the brakes. He's tapped the brakes on the main straight. Phil Cell wasn't prepared for it. A little bit of contact. He got away with it. I think Ford was trying to let Phil Cell pass. Yes, I have seen in um, a couple of series here, drivers will use just a tap of the brakes as a bit of a symbol to uh, they uh, pass me here or let the other driver by, but uh, clearly a bit of miscommunication as they nearly made contact all the way in at the pit wall. But Phil Cell takes the position, moves himself up into P9. He should be pulling away from Ian Ford very shortly, and he's going to have his sights set on the 8th place car, which is Kurt Stenberg. Although when he gets there, he's going to have two cars to deal with because then he is putting a lot of pressure on Martin Carroll. He's reeling him in at the rate of uh, he was half a second quicker that last time by. Those SDC cars are appearing to be very quick on a short run, but maybe not looking after the tyres so well. Yeah, no, I was going to say the exact same thing. Towards the end of the stint, they seem to be slowing down a little bit. Denberg's applying plenty of pressure. Now we are, of course past halfway, just past the halfway point of the race, 24 laps remaining. It's still Richard Hampstead from John Latham and Lee Ellis, Madison down in fourth, Mitch McLeod fifth, James McKnight in sixth, and we are watching the battle for seventh between Martin Carroll and Kurt Stenberg, but it won't be long until we add Jarek Philsell to that list of names. But look at how close Stenberg is heading up through the S's, he was quicker once again on that last lap. That Sim Instruments car definitely looking strong as he runs in the 8th position. Another couple of cars to note, Leo, was uh, Mitchell McLeod's catching Madison down. Just going off lap times. He's slowly, that slowly is. pulling him in. Just a tenth for two each lap. He's got time. 23 laps still remain in the motor race. He's, as you said, two tenths quicker that last time by, and he's got two seconds to make up. <laughs> and McLeod's shown a lot of pace, but uh, of course had a bit of an on-track incident that, uh, that caught him out a bit earlier. So he'll be, uh, he'll be fighting very hard to try and make up for that little error. Final run to the line is going to be an interesting one as we see how people are going to try and plan their final stint. The lap times, it looks like there is a fair bit of drop off. Some cars are looking pretty ugly in the handling department out there. Lap times are dropping by about half a second for some cars and over a second for some others. So clearly you're going to want the best tyres that you can get as clear as you can but if you put them on too early, you're going to be in trouble. We see our race leader is already catching lap traffic. Oh, Phil Cell. Phil Cell passed Marty Carroll. He's all around the outside. Ooh, that's an interesting place to pass. I think Carroll may have got a slowdown because he let Stenberg pass as well. Stenberg claims seven. Phil Cell in eighth. Martin Carroll lines up behind them again. And uh, Jared Philsaw has closed the gap between himself and Kurt Stenberg.
Just keeping you informed, back up the front, Hampstead is working his way through traffic. Everyone's giving them the room that he deserves as the race leader, but uh, this fight that we see between Stenberg, Philcell, and Carroll, Carroll's putting a lot of pressure on Jared Philcell. He, um, he hasn't quite uh, quite run away, so Carroll's definitely still got the pace on. Like you said, must have been a slowdown there. Yeah, this group's heating up. I think you'll see them both catch up to Stenberg. Bill just covers the inside line, heading down towards the second to last turn. That lap around coming. was in a, sorry, I was going to say 11-2 for Stenberg and 11-2 for Phil Sell and 11-2 for Carroll. <laughs> There's nothing between these guys. Maintaining the gaps exactly as they sit. Now, I was going to say that we're reaching about the point where um, drivers can think about making their final pit stop. 21 laps left in the race. And from what we saw in that development series race, you should be able to do about 20 laps on a tank of fuel. So we're getting pretty close. Question from there is going to be who decides to take the plunge. And I see one of the cars pulling off already. Not one of the front runners couldn't quite tell who it was. Philip Johansson down in 28th position. Philip Johansson into the pits. At Hampstead, race leader, and he's held, he's held the front for... Uh, the entirety of this race, with the exception of the pit stops, he's going to be in command at the front. He's got a five second gap back to his teammate. So he can play it any way he wants. It's the guys a bit further in the pack that we need to take care of or, or keep an eye on. Because pits are a big way to make some sort of a ground. We've already seen some big differences in pit stop times. And I'm seeing Ian Ford is the first of the top ten into the pits. Ford had a really quick stop last time by. Also seeing one of the SDC cars in there at the same time with him. Might be Nigel Baines, I think. No, not Baines, sorry. Chad Chastain in the pits. Chastain was also running well. He was in about 12th or 13th position before he pitted. And Ian Ford is going to be the first of the top 10 guys to make his pit stop. Yeah, and he's come out behind Jake Burton, who was in 22nd position. And on that, Richard Hampstead into the pits. Hampstead, Latham and Ellis. So the top three pit on the same lap. Madison down goes to resume. Oh, sorry, I was going to say, Stenberg was completely crossed up, heading into the pits to get it stopped. Bill Sell shadowed, shadowed him in. Trying to pull any sort of an advantage that you can. So Stenberg and Phil Cell in together. Martin Carroll, who was the other uh, other factor of that fight, he stays out. So Hampstead has pitted. He's in the pits now. Sorry, exited the pits. But Madison down, Mitch McLeod, James McKnight, and Martin Carroll, four drivers that are ahead of him on the racetrack still to make their second stop of the race. 19 laps to go till we reach the checkered flag. Yeah, the Phil Cell taken. Everyone... So Phil Cell took a three and a half second longer pit stop than Stenberg, so that gap's opened up again. Those two guys made very, very quick pit stops. I might be reading this right, but am I seeing a uh, a 12 second stop for Stenberg and a nine second stop for Phil Cell? Um, no, mate, no. I got 16 seconds for Stenberg and 20 seconds for Phil Cell. All right, thank you for clearing that. <laughs> Obviously, the uh, the pit info there still needs to update itself, but uh, Addison down at the front. He leads, and Chad Chastain, who uh, has made a oh, pit stop, is hustling. John him, so. Sorry, I've got a butt in there. John Latham's had a massive moment on the last corner. That car is toast. He was on corrected order, second position.
it held second for uh, for the bulk of the race. Just going back it was... through it. Oh, traffic. You had a, uh, a car coming into the pits. Yeah, That's traffic held hard. him up. Lee Ellis was able to close right up behind him. I'm not sure if there was contact between Ellis and Latham. No, no, it wasn't Ellis and Latham. It was the uh, the car that was heading into the pits uh, at the apex. Of course, the, uh, the nature of pit in here at Watkins Glen. Uh, the pit in, you need to slow it right up at the apex of the final turn. So when Latham's gone to uh, to hit the gas and go, oh, and there's a car around at the carousel. Um, as he's done that, he's run straight into the back of uh, of that other car, and it's uh, it's Joshua Beecroft who is around at the carousel. He's uh, he's stuck facing the inside wall in that burst and auto parts Ford, and he's had to uh, had to get a tow back to the pit. So Beecroft is going to drop out of the race with that one. Yeah, he was stuck in a very precarious position there. Well, this is going to mix up the top ten in this race. So Madison Down is still staying out on the track. He's got 21 and a half seconds between him and effective race leader Richard Hampstead. But uh, what I wanted to point out was the way that Chad Chastain uh, came right up behind uh, Madison Down there. Chastain has pitted. Chastain uh, is on fresh tyres as Madison Down pits. You see the speed difference at the apex there. That's what caught John Latham out. Um, the way that uh, Chastain was able to really get up the back of, um, of Madison down there, those fresh tyres definitely count for something at the start of a run. I think Mitch McLeod pits from second position as well. So Richard Hampstead is rounding the final turn. He's got clear track in front of him and he will resume the race lead. Hampstead flashes by, is down, he's left sitting in his pit stall. Lee Ellis is going to move into second on the road, is he? Yes, he is. Yeah, Richard Hampstead's got over a 10 second lead now on this race. Now, Madison down and Mitch McLeod are down and off the jacks. They're exiting the pits now. And I believe down is going to claim third position. Mitch McLeod fourth and James McKnight is going to be in position five. So as things cycle through, we're starting to get a bit of a picture of the top five in the race. Hampstead, Ellis, down to McLeod. John Latham was running second, but had an incident at the final turn, which has dropped him way down the order. He's still sitting in the pits getting repairs to his TTL Falcon. I think Kurt Stenberg is going to claim 6th position once the pit stop cycle through. Still 15 laps to go in the race. Jared Philsell is going to be in 7th. Marty Carroll in 8th. Ian Ford in 9th. And it will be uh, the last spot in the top 10 that's up for grabs. But Tobias Cerny is going to be the man who's currently occupying it in that Powerbond Deco Falcon. Tobias has had a bit of a quiet night, but... Uh, Starting 26th on the grid, if he can get a top 10, I think he would be very happy. Yeah, it's been a particularly good quiet race from Tobias. Yeah, he has completed all of his stops and he is in position 10. Uh, the other one that we should notice, just behind that, Damien Butler pulls himself up into 11th on the grid. Another quite solid knot. And he's got Aaron Hamilton and Chad Chastain just behind. So great to see the amount of progress that guys can make through the field, looking at people like Tobias Cerny, Aaron Hamilton, for example. Hamilton started in 24th, currently running P12. Cerny, as we touched on, started 26th and runs in 10th. Yeah, there's been quite a, quite a few of good gains. Tobias, what was 15? Aaron Hamilton, he's gained 11. Henry King. He's gained 6, 15 positions as well. 
The big losers so far, John Latham down 24 positions. And Matthew Hill, they were second and third on the grid. And they both lost a huge, huge amount of um, positions with their incidences. Yeah, both are back out on track to gain some points, but um, not the way that the TTL team pictured this event to go. They locked out qualifying a 1-2-3. Looked as if they were going to be able to hold that for the duration of the race. But it's all come undone for two of the cars. But you've still got Richard Hampstead, number 28, Cask Falcon, in the lead of the race. He has led all of the race. Are the pit stops so far? He has got a monster 11.6 second gap over P2, which is Lee Ellis. Bill Sells moving on to the back of Stenberg once again. We saw that Bill Sell had a lot of pace towards the end of his stint on these longer races with this uh, the variety of weather that we could be seeing out there on the track it's um it's important to have a car that does look after its tires and does come on strong throughout the course of a race especially when you're doing over 200 kilometers of racing here at Watkins Glen it's a long event hard work for these drivers and hard work on the cars uh, I tell you there's not a lot of cars out there that are looking uh, looking showroom class because there's been a lot of action there's been a lot of beating and banging so if you make it to the finish and you've got a clean car, congratulations to you because you're not going to be uh, you're not going to be having many others that are in the same boat. No, no, that's for sure. Like you said, 200 kilometres, hell of a long way to race. The concentration levels to uh, keep it off the walls up for those S's, very hard to do. I don't think there's a car out there without some sort of damage to some panels. Well, I imagine that uh, if there is going to be one, it's probably Richard Hampstead. He's driven. Nothing short of a perfect race, I guess. Pole position. I believe the fastest lap of the race. I'll check up on that. I'm actually certain that it is now. 109667. So tremendous pace from Richard Hampstead. And the only time that he hasn't led at the line has been through pit stops. And of course, he's lapped the entire field up to 17th position, so the sheer pace of Hampstead tonight, outstanding effort. Absolutely, especially most impressive given that we started this race with 36 cars on the track, so that is a lot of lapping to be done. A lot of cars, a lot of good cars and strong drivers that he's put a lap down. Setting a, uh, or making, I guess, a bit of a statement for this online premiere series that Hampstead is here and he means business. Still a lot of racing to go in this season though. A lot of learning to be done by all the drivers out there but clearly Richard Hampstead has a handle on what he needs to do to reach victory lane at Watkins Glen. As he reaches the line there will be 10 laps remaining in the race. But uh, you can't win, you'll want to end up on the podium Ellis is looking pretty good at the moment, but Richard Ham, sorry, Mitch McLeod, he's catching Madison down. That gap has closed up since the pit stops, and uh, Mitch McLeod is actually the fastest car on track right now. He's the only driver that's lapping in the 109s. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Madison Down has actually done the fastest, his fastest lap of the race, last lap around with a 10s flat. And Mitch McLeod's going even quicker with 109s, so... Impressive he's, pace. He's and got they, the eyes uh, on. Absolutely, a podium. Podium means a lot to these guys. He's closed the gap down to six tenths of a second. And these guys have got traffic to contend with. Just ahead on the road, you see Nigel Baines and Tim Jackson. These guys have got a fight on of their own. And uh, Baines is looking on the inside of Jackson. Can't get it done. These guys are fighting hard, and they're about to have two guys in on a, uh, a fight for the podium catching them. Now, yeah. they're perfectly entitled to race on their own. They've got their own battle on their hands, but it's going to be very interesting to see how uh, 
uh, Madison down and Mitch McLeod handle this sort of traffic. It certainly does put them in an awkward position. Do you move over and let these guys lapping you through and maybe not get, gain that position in front? Well, we'll see what happens in about a lap's time. But uh, Nigel Baines oh. is going to—he's going to pull aside. So great sportsmanship there by Baines. He slots back in behind Mitch McLeod. Tim Jackson holding down the 20th position. He'll this have is going to slow Madison up. Eh? He's not going to let him through until they get up through the S's. There you go. He gives him the wave by, calls it on the radio. Yeah, well done that's, by the pair of them. That's probably the uh, the right way to do it because obviously you don't want to sacrifice your own fight, you don't want to compromise your own battle. But uh, good, timely fashion. And we've got two fights that are going to continue on there because already Baines is closing back up on Tim Jackson and Mitch McLeod closing up on Madison Down. Nine laps to go and the action is heating up here for the final spot on the podium. And that battle will keep an, that other battle will keep an eye on for sixth and seventh. Uh, Phil Sell's got around the outside of Stenberg on the second last corner on the previous lap. As he look at weaving a little Stenberg bit, chasing him across the track. I don't think that Stenberg's just going to uh, just going to continue on lapping to the finish. He wants that spot back. He's going to try and use traffic to get around Jared Phil Sell if he can. But the pace Phil Sell has had in the closing stages of a run has been nothing short of impressive. Johansson moves over and let these two continue their battle as they head up the hill once again on the 45th time. Oh, I've got I had a wall, a current of the wall just then up in the S's. I missed it, didn't see it. Uh... Don Latham. So he's uh, not, it's gone from bad to worse. Poor Don Latham. I've also caught, the, not sure where exactly, but Damien Butler has had trouble somewhere on the track. Uh, Damien Butler, um... Not quite sure what's happened. Reese, have you got something for us in the pits? Yeah, um, it's, apparently he has gotten a meatball flag, so he's going to have to come into the pits uh, for repairs. Uh, that's a shame. He was running in a very strong position, about 12th on track, I believe it was. Uh, just to update you on the fights around the track as they're going through, Nigel Baines has taken position, position 19 away from Tim Jackson. Those guys were fighting very hard. Fortunately, made it easy for Madison Down and Mitch McLeod. But uh, those lap times seem to have stabilised. McLeod had a big head of steam up to, but, uh, up to close the gap, but hasn't been able to make inroads. They're still running very quick lap times, quicker than everyone with the exception of... I was going to say Richard Hampson, but the fast man on track now is actually Chad Chastain. And Chastain is hunting down Tobias Cerny. We've got the two internationals in the field fighting hard for the final spot in the top ten. also give a nod of course to Nigel Baines and Philip Johansson so we've got uh, four drivers from around the world that have joined us here at Watkins Glen and Chastain and Cerny look like they're going to put on a bit of a show because Cerny is running defensive into the bus stop been a terrific race from Cerny we've mentioned before Currently sitting in 10th from 26 on the grid. He's not going to want to give this up. He's got the inside line, but Chastain looks like he's got this move done before they get to the corner. Chastain's just got so much grip. He made it easy through the carousel. He's able to put the car in places where Cerny's car couldn't go. Uh, we should mention as well that Chastain qualified in the top 10. He started this race in 7th position. He's made an extra pit stop. I believe he actually had a black flag for an incident earlier in the race. So Chastain coming back up through the field. He's got a, uh, a bit of a gap before he can attack Ian Ford, who's the next car on his list. Keep your posts as to how that goes, because we've got to turn our attention back to the fight for third. Madison down and Mitch McLeod, just two tenths of a second separating these two drivers. Yeah, Mitch McLeod is all but there. He can, he can smell that podium position. 
course we heard earlier that Madison Downs running damage. Mitchell Very McLeod's tough. been having a stellar season in the official series. I think he's done three from three or four from four or something like that now. So I was he's, having a... he's no stranger to success, is Mitch McLeod. But uh, neither is the man that he's fighting with. Of course, Madison Down has a, uh, a well-documented history in the iRacing Gate Supercar Series. Undoubtedly the most successful driver in that series. But he's got his hands full at the moment because Mitch McLeod doesn't care who is racing. He gets a bit of a run through the bus stop, but you can't make anything happen at the carousel there. Madison Down is just putting the car in the right positions. But look at the run that Mitch McLeod has got. Got a good exit. He's going to poke the nose out. But it's just for show because he can't make the move there. Question's going to be where is the move going to happen if it does happen? Turn one's a good spot, but very tricky. You need a great run out of this final turn. Four laps to go, so he's running out of time. He needs a really good exit out of, out of turn one here. Really close up on and get the run onto that back straight. Madison Anderson Downs' seems... car looks, I was going to say, he looks good where he needs to be good. Yeah, he's really, really getting off turn one well. Pulling well, out that extra to, uh, half a car length or so. Look at how McLeod closes up through the bus stop. Clearly Mitch McLeod's car is handling a change of direction a bit better than Madison Downs is. <clears throat> you see he just pulls in a couple of car lengths at the bus stop. And again through the carousel but you need to be right up behind another car to be able to make something happen because Down is strong enough through those first uh, through the first part of the track proven to be difficult for Mitch McLeod to find a way through and they're coming to the line where there will be three laps remaining so three laps to go here at Watkins Glen it's still Hampstead from Ellis the battle for third is what we are watching at the moment this is Madison Down in the ultimate karting Sydney Falcon followed by Mitch McLeod third and fourth on the road McLeod looks like he's got pace he just can't find a way through you see Madison Down using all of the road in there some Mitch McLeod looks best on the, uh, the second last in the last corner that's where he really closes in on Madison Down so we have seen passes there before as Down takes a bit of a defensive line and moves back across. Did clearly he saw a bit of a uh, a bit of a weakness in his own driving there. Down's car does not look happy through the uh, through the um, bus stop and you see again heading out of the bus stop gets big time sideways. Unfortunately the carousel's a one line corner. He gets sideways again. You're going to have to give the move to uh, to Mitch McLeod. He's going to have the run. They're going to be side by side. Unfortunately, McLeod's going to be on the outside. He's going to have to be ballsy under brakes. And he's going to try and make it happen around the outside. He has to use all oh, of the well road. Done. He's got the high ground for the final turn. And a beautiful move by Mitchell McLeod. Wasn't easy, but Madison down going for the switchback. Terrific Doesn't driving with a pair of them. Absolutely. Down gave plenty of room. So two laps to go. Madison Down's going to go back up the inside. He's going to try and take the position back. A big dive at turn one. All sliding. Somehow he doesn't. He holds on, but they're still side by side hitting into the S's. And there you go. McLeod takes the spot. That Fantastic was... drive, and it's for well, the pair of them. Uh, both testament to their both won championships. So, and that was leaving nothing out there at all. Madison down, lost the position, but didn't want to give it up. And what a dive down into turn one. Somehow he held on. Great composure by Mitch McLeod to be able to hold on to the position. And with that, we're going to turn our attention to race leader Richard Hampstead, who begins the last lap of the race. He's got 15 seconds clear on Lee Ellis. He's got eight corners to go until he takes the victory here at Watkins Glen. Second been a sensational drive from Hampstead tonight. Absolutely, it's been a faultless run. Lee Ellis in second has also had a sterling drive. Kept his nose clean and brought it home. We'll 
not home yet, but he's holding on in second. Mitch McLeod in third, so very, very strong podium there. But Hampstead, clearly the drive of the race. Just hearing, guys, uh, from TTR spy guy Kurt Stenberg in that battered Sim Instruments Falcon is currently in fuel saving mode. Uh, I was told that a couple of drivers would probably come up short on strategy, and it seems that uh, Tobias Zerny uh, is another one of those guys. He's uh, certainly uh, not pushing as hard as he would probably like, but uh, very good drive from Richard Hampstead. Yeah, as he crosses the line, takes the win. For round two of the online premiere series. Fantastic drive by Richard Hampstead. Pole position. Lights the flag win. Headed only in the pit stop. Lee Ellis comes across to take second. Right down the pit wall. Very happy with that one. It's going to be Mitch McLeod who holds on from Madison down. Fantastic fight for the final, final step of the podium. James McKnight rounding the final turn. Great drive by the SDC car. Bring it home in the top five. Bill Cell sliding out of the final turn. Bit of a celebration there. But of course, the man of the match has got to be Richard Hampstead. Kurt Stenberg uh, did make it across the line in seventh. Yeah, his car was, barely. Car, car was coughing as it crossed the line there. And Marty Carroll, Ian Ford, and Chad Chastain all claimed their positions in the top 10. Cerny did make it across the line in 11th. And then Aaron Hamilton has gone across the line in 12th. The last car on the lead lap. So, for Richard Hampstead to lap everyone up to 12th position on the road is just a tremendous performance. And you see the celebrations from Hampstead. He's lapping it up. Got to be very happy with his performance tonight. Going to do some donuts on the front straight for us. As he should. What a performance. So, week two of the V8 Supercar Online Premier Series. And it hasn't disappointed. Uh, what an event here at Watkins Glen. Drivers had to work really hard to get the results that they all earned. With two pit stops. With... High aware, the strategy, and uh, what a night, what a performance by race winner Richard Hampstead, and of course the other podium finishes, Lee Ellis and Mitch McLeod. Yeah, fantastic racing tonight as Hampstead continues his donuts on the main straight, and it's a well-deserved celebration for him. Uh, we can't forget, all the TTL cars had terrific pace, uh, Latham and... Um, Hilly obviously come and do some problems throughout the race, but all three cars obviously look very good tonight. That's going to be um, something of a, uh, a statement that TTL's made for the rest of the field, for the rest of the season, because if they can carry this pace on, everyone else has got some catching up to do. They really were the class of the field, and if those other two hadn't have had dramas like Latham and, um, and Matthew Hill... You could probably have banked on a TTL 1, 2, 3. Yeah, definitely. But, Leo, uh, the TTR, ANZ, all the guys will be scratching their heads trying to find it for the next round. But uh, at the moment, the TTL guys deserve their time in the sun. A terrific uh, pace from all of them. So we should run through the official results of the session. Of course, as we see, race winner Richard Hampstead at 46 laps from the pole to the flag. Tremendous drive. Fastest lap of the race at the same time, too. We also had Lee Ellis and Mitch McLeod rounding out the podium. Madison Down brought it home in position fourth from James McKnight in fifth. Jared Philsell ninth. Sorry, sixth. Uh, Kurt Stenberg, seventh from 15th on the grid. Martin Carroll in eighth. Ian Ford in ninth. Those three were all big movers and shakers in the race. Followed by Chad Chastain, who brought it home in position 10. Yeah, and to Tobias Cerny in 11th, Aaron Hamilton, the last on the lead lap in 12th, Henry King, followed by Sean Kelly, Joshua Burden, Jason Dixon in 16th, Bobby Jankovic into 17th, Greg Sharp 18th, Nigel Baines, and then Timothy Jackson rounded out the top 20. 
had Lance Perkins bring it home in 21st position. Rod Denyer, 22nd. Philip Johansson, 23rd. And then Chris Hogan in 24th. Damian Butler, 25th. Scott Tate. John Latham, who ran very well at the front of the field. Fortunately, ran into dramas and brought it home 27th, 11 laps down. Jake Burton also had dramas. Joshua Beecroft ran into problems too. And that was the last car to finish the race, followed by Dean O'Brien, who unfortunately exited out in position 30. Yeah, and the other guys that weren't able to finish, Michael Fulcher, Matty Hill, Corey Preston, Bo Cattell, Chris Dickerson, Tony Autridge, and Stephen Clark. So it was a strong field. It was a big field. There was a lot of drivers and a, a lot of action out there. And expect this sort of stuff to continue. We head on through the season. A lot of uh, a lot of new experiences and learnings done by everyone out there too. You know, it's especially impressive for me was the pace change. I imagine it would have been very hard as a driver to think that um, you've got yourself all figured out for qualifying. You're setting the fastest laps you can go, and then you head into a race session where uh, the conditions have changed, and you're nearly a second a lap quicker than you were. Yeah, of course, um, we heard from Reese a lot of guys were using a shadow or something of that effect for their brake markers, and come come race time, it's overcast, and that's not there, so that's for another spanner in the works for, for them to figure out. Yeah, well, that'll be a lesson learned for next time. Guys, don't use movable objects for brake markers. It's not a good thing to be uh, to be tricking yourself into doing. But, of course, everyone made it through as best as they could. <clears throat> And we saw some fantastic racing throughout throughout the field, I think it was, you know. Unfortunate incidents for a few guys. Uh, the TTL cars, of course, they'll be um, a bit disappointed with what should have been a, a much stronger result for Latham and Hill. But uh, but overall, they know the pace is there, and it's going to be a um, going to be a great thing to follow into our next round at Road Atlanta. Yeah, uh, Road Atlanta next in a fortnight's time, uh Quite a bit different from this track. Uh, it'll be interesting to see the guys that can come out and um, lately if they can do anything about the TTL cars. Road Atlanta is a great track for V8 supercars. We've seen it put on plenty of great races in the official series. Going to be another new format because there's going to be a, a double header event at Road Atlanta. Two races in a fortnight's time at Road Atlanta. And then two weeks after that, we're going to head to England for an endurance race at Donington Park. So we're going to have a long one out at Donington, the first enduro of the season, before we head to our Australian swing. We've got another double header at Oran Park. Can't wait for that one, especially with the feel of the cars that we'll be cramming into that little place. Phillip Island will come two weeks after that, and then we're going to close it out with what better of a finale than an endurance race at Mount Panorama. Yeah, and that endurance race... I have driver swaps. So. <laughs> that's right, because that's going to be one of the things that we're going to try and manage and uh, and pull through in this series, is that we're going to try and make everything as close to a real-world counterpart as we can. When I race and gets those driver swaps in, that means our endurance races, they're going to be proper enduros. You're going to have to hand your car over to another driver and hope that he doesn't bin it. And it's going to be a real new twist on online V8 supercar racing. But that's the entire point of this online premiere series. We are really looking forward to bringing you all of that action here at Vats Online. Now we're going to have some drivers start to filter on through into the commentary box here. Really looking forward to hearing how uh, how the conditions felt, how the racing felt out there. A lot of stories to follow through, I'm sure. And uh, I think that we've got um, Kurt Stenberg in at the moment. Any of you got us, mate? I've got you. Oh, man, fantastic drive to bring it home in seventh position. Started 15th on the grid and had a bit of a cough over the line. How'd you find the race out there, mate? Yeah, the race went well. Uh, I qualify as uh, high as I'd like to, but um, just stayed there and kept my pace and followed my teammates through until we bend it. And Yeah, had to say a few in the last stint. Uh, Really wanted to race uh, Jared, but I couldn't because I was about five or six litres short. So, saving really had hard that. in the last five laps to make it. I'm going to say you clearly had a uh, a good strategy or, or good turn of pace, whatever it was, to bring it bring it that far up the field. 
Also, make mention, mate, I'm uh, not sure if you picked it, but you actually had zero incidents, zero uh, collisions, off-tracks, anything like that, and the only driver in the field, so clearly you must have had, uh, had Watkins Glen treating you well out there. Ah, oh, that's something. Normally, I'm, normally I end up with, like, 15, so I'm happy with that. That's the way, mate. Now, um, with those two pit stops, with that opportunity to try a bit of a fuel strategy, what do you think of the new experience and uh, and doing it different out there as we are in the in the Premier Series? Happy with the way it all works out? Yeah, I'm loving it. It's the best online V8 series that's ever been, so keep up the good work, everyone involved. Yeah, and keep up the action, mate. We're loving it. So uh, we'll leave you to it. Congratulations on a solid top 10 and uh, look forward to the next one. Guys. And in the commentary box, we've got uh, Madison Down finished in fourth place. How did you find out there tonight, Madison? Yeah, I had a struggle tonight. <laughs> I um, yeah, just didn't really have the pace, unfortunately, of the uh, TTL guys. So um, yeah, unfortunately, just not quite fast enough. But grabbed the wall pretty hard, and I don't know, first stint lap ten roundabouts. So I was driving with a pretty bent car. I came in at the stop, and it offered me four minutes of optional repairs so it was a bit of a um, bit of a downhill race after that and it was just a matter of trying to keep the thing in a competitive position but to end up fourth not too bad overall yeah hey, you um cer certainly was able to keep the pace up there and weren't able to run with your teammate lee ellis but uh had a great battle with mitchell mcleod there in the final laps yeah i could see mitch coming for about half an hour actually and um I knew he, he had a much faster car than I did in the back end of that race. But, um, yeah, awesome battle in the final few laps. They gave it a red-hot go, but I just didn't have the tyre grip underneath me to do it. And I lacked a little bit of straight line speed as well after the damage. So, But, yeah, awesome. Would have been um, would have been good to get third, but uh, still got the uh, ultimate karting Sydney Falcon up there in the top five and equaled the pre-qual result and my quality result. So, oh, well, stayed stayed in the same place. And um, in two weeks' time, we look at Road Atlanta. Uh, feeling confident for out there? Uh, yeah, Road Atlanta has always been a pretty good track for, for me and, and TTR, so um, it should be good. We we normally get the car set up pretty nicely there, but we'll see what happens because um, TTL's clearly got their car set up brilliantly tonight with a 1 2 3 in quality. So um, yeah, we'll have to try and get on top of that. Yeah, they certainly uh, stamped some authority on this series with that qualifying session. So, uh, well, good luck with that, mate. And um, I'll hand it over to Leo. Cheers, Brooksy. We've got Tobias Zerny joining us here in the commentary box. Tobias, yeah, what a guys. drive from yourself, buddy. You know, starting in, uh, where were you? 26th on the grid, and you find yourself in 11th at the checkered flag. How's that feel? Uh, I was incredible. Uh, I was massively struggling with quality pace. Um, so after the start, I found myself around guys who were the same quality pace, uh, but were somehow a bit slower. I really struggled to get past the uh, match of traffic there all over. Um, tried to do a few passes, which went wrong. Well, as I was on the outside of a few corners and lost positions. So, uh, but. <laughs> It took, a while, it took me a while until the, all the guys sorted out and uh, by doing mid-12s or whatever, uh, then I was able to grab one by one and getting closer and closer to the guys ahead. And really was kind of surprised that after the first pit stop phase, uh, I jumped a couple of people and found myself somewhere in the top 15. Uh, I was also able then to run lap times the second quicker than in the first stint. And yeah, but unfortunately, uh, I miscalculated my fuel a bit over this weather. Uh, gave us a pretty high fuel burn, so even though I took already more fuel than I had planned in the final pit stop, uh, I was pretty short then at, uh, on fuel, because also uh, comparing with the remaining laps I had to do, it was the laps of Madison, uh, so of the leader, uh, no, Richard of the leader, um, and he was nearly a second uh, uh, lap behind me, and so I had <laughs> taken a, a one lap fuel uh, short, so... Um, had to save, couldn't hold off uh, Chet Chastain in the end uh, for the top 10 po position, which would, would have been pretty pretty awesome regarding uh, all the issues I have with Watkins. So, uh, But uh, 11th place uh, is also super fun, I I'll take it, so way better than at Coter, I had a super clean race. Second stint there was a accident with Michael Fulcher, he spun uh, between the second last corner 
and last corner. And I was just able to somehow glitch through him, I guess, due to uh, the netcode. Uh, luckily, survived that and could continue on. Well, you kept your nose clean, and uh, we commented on it was just a case of down to business and uh, and just chip away at it. And it definitely paid off. Fifteen positions is nothing to sneeze at. And uh, I liked hearing you mention about the fuel burn and just having to to think on your toes. And that's something that's probably a, a new twist that we're seeing here with this online premier series. It's uh it's great here to watch, but uh, how do you feel as a driver? Just spicing things up like that, bringing a new element that you need to keep on top of. How's it feel? Um, you mean with the fuel, with the limited fuel, or? No, no, no. With all the changes, as in like uh, the fact that you, the weather, the weather changed, ah, the kept weather you on changes. your toes. Different strategies by needing to make twin pit yeah. stops, two stops in the night. Seems yeah, like basically. there are a lot of different strategies you could play. Yeah, there were not too many different strategies. Two stops were, were definitely required. You could play a bit around with the fuel masses uh, in both stops. Um, I didn't change the setup or adjusted the setup. Uh, I was just hoping it suits. Did a couple of laps, it felt good. Uh, actually, felt better than uh, in the quality session. So, um, I think the um, overcast sky hyped us out there. So, it was pretty cool. Uh, I guess some people were a bit disappointed to see some other light setting because the breaking marker for the chicane, this big shadow, was gone. So <laughs> it was a bit interesting there. Uh, so you had to look on the left to some numbers. And um, yeah, that, that, that definitely another challenge if you were practicing with some other lightnings before. Always good to hear Tobias. And again, congrats on your solid result. And thanks for joining us. And we'll see you uh, hopefully next time at Road Atlanta. Yes, I will be there. Uh, I hope it works better than the first week in the official series. So, uh, looking forward to see uh, also some of my team members in the top split as well. So, that was a small thing <laughs> uh, to my teammates. I think I hope they, they followed the race. Uh, we're also happy with, with my result, finishing nearly in the top 10. So, um, yeah. Thanks for broadcasting. Uh, always a pleasure to be here and see you guys in two weeks' time. Anytime, mate. All the best. Another driver we've got is Jared Philsell. How did you find it out there tonight, mate? Um, it was very good in pre quality The weather was just amazing. The car was on rails. Um, the quality server tonight was a bit average. The car was moving around a lot more. But the actual race server, that was like back on rails again. It was like really good to go back there and uh, race on good weather. Yeah, we um, you gridded up ninth position, but uh, you're facing the wrong stage here in the early, the wrong way in the early stages of that race. But uh, to get it back to six was the outstanding effort. Uh, have a bit of fun coming back through the field. Oh yeah, I actually got a blinder start, and I think I was uh, up to six by the first corner, and uh, it's unusual. But yeah, I was I wasn't too happy when I was facing the wrong way. But yeah, back in twenty first to come back and finish six is a pretty good effort. And a good battle with uh, Kurt Stenberg at the end, just uh, just for good measure. And um, James McKnight too far up the road to get a top five, but uh, you must be confident heading into the rest of the series and Road Atlanta in two weeks' time. Yeah, definitely. I knew I was never going to catch James. I probably had a fourth or fifth place car on the actual speed in the race itself. So, yeah, I was pretty happy to finish sixth after being the wrong way. Oh, we look forward to seeing you race in two weeks' time, and I think that was pretty much all the drivers we got. I think the Formula One's on, so a lot of guys are tuning in to watch the Formula One, Leo. Yeah, that's going to wrap things up for us here. But uh, I tell you, what a night of racing. Watkins Glen certainly turns it up, but Road Atlanta is one I've had circled on the calendar for a little while. Looking forward to that. Two weeks' time, and we're going to continue with the V8's online premiere series. Of course, we'll say thanks to Get Dirty MX and Track Racer for making it possible once again. But uh, closing thoughts as we go through this new series, this new experience, Brooksy, how does it feel as a, as a punter, as a fan, and as a team owner? Uh, I think it's terrific. The uh, racing that's getting put on, the live stewards are keeping it clean. We are, we're just that battle between Mitchell and Madison at the end there is a testament to that. Um... Team owner, how the hell are we going to catch TTL? I don't know, but uh, 
yeah, I think um, the series itself is going great, Guns. There's plenty of participation each week, and um, it's going to go from strength to strength, I think. Absolutely summed it up uh, as good as it can get, I reckon. And we've also kept our pit reporter busy because Reese has had a lot to handle, a lot to uh, to keep up with, and, uh, of course, a lot to keep you on your toes, mate. Oh, certainly. Uh, this was a very interesting race to report on, definitely. Uh, I might have uh, a little bit of a rest with Road Atlanta, if I'm right in assuming that it's uh, two sprint races. Uh, but if it's pit stops uh, as well, then uh, I guess all the better, because uh, more pit stops is better for me, I guess. Uh, but I'm really looking really? forward to the Enduro at Donington. That's going to be absolutely brilliant. I've always been a fan of uh, uh, Road Atlanta and Donington, so it will be fantastic to see some more races on those tracks. So, uh, yeah, this uh, this has been a really good series so far, and I'm definitely looking forward to it going from strength to strength in the future. Absolutely. So as we wrap things up here, we'll send a big congratulations to all of the podium finishers and to our winner for the night, Richard Hampstead at Team TTL. They're going to be super happy about that one. We're looking forward to the next one here at Vets Online. We hope you are too. You can tune in in two weeks' time for Road Atlanta. Get yourself ready. It's going to be some great racing. But thanks for joining us. That'll be it for us tonight. And goodbye.